Good evening, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with a look at Hurricane Matthew this evening, about 10 minutes to 9 Eastern Time. Something's happened to the satellite imagery, and the last frame here went dark. Hopefully it's not going to be long term, because that would be a big problem for obvious reasons. So let's stop it on the last of the frames here that we do have right there. And I want to point out a few things. First of all, it looks kind of ragged around the edges overall. A lot of questions about what this is and why it's been so persistent in the eastern side of this general circulation. Huge area of deep convection, uh, very, very high cloud tops associated with it. I better draw in yellow here. It shows up better. Pushing up against the top of the atmosphere there, at least where the weather occurs, most of it anyway, the troposphere, and uh, probably minus 70, minus 80 cloud tops in there and very, very heavy rainfall underneath. But then here is the eye of Hurricane Matthew. Fairly round overall central dense overcast, but not as round as it was yesterday or last night. So it's undergoing some structural changes overall, some shear impacting it, and just, you know, not quite, it doesn't look like a Cat 5 anymore, put it that way. So winds are 150 at last report, probably a little lower than that. The bottom line is this is a major, strong, intense, whatever you want to call it, hurricane with a lot of firepower. And it is going to be headed towards Jamaica here and up here towards the western portion of the Haitian Peninsula tomorrow and into Monday. Looking at the impacts affecting land, I want to go over this. This is extremely important. I think the wind part, most people understand hurricane they think equals wind. That's what we think of. A lot of icons show flags blowing in the wind, hurricane flags, palm trees, whatever. So a lot of people think about wind. So yes, hurricane force winds possible in the warning area. We understand this part pretty good probably. Uh, rainfall. This is the area that really concerns me the most. 15 to 25 inches over southern Haiti with possible isolated maximum amounts of 40 inches. 40 inches. 48 inches is 4 feet. We're not talking about snow. We're talking about rain over areas that has 5,000 foot mountain peaks at least. This is not good at all. So the, to say that it could produce life-threatening uh, flash floods and mudslides is an understatement. And this is a very, very deadly effect of this hurricane, an impact that people need to seriously consider. But you know, how do you reach these folks? Haiti is one of the poorest nations in the Western Hemisphere. What do you do? There's just there's too many people and too much of a in harm's way for this and unfortunately it's probably not going to end very well for these folks uh, over the next 36 to 48 hours. We can hope for the best, but hope uh, is not a planning tool by itself. I don't know. I don't know what they do down there to warn people. It, it's just not good. So we'll we'll certainly keep our fingers crossed. And then, as it moves uh, away from South America, still down in the Caribbean, still producing two to four inches, uh, you know, Colombia, Northwest Venezuela, the ABC Islands, etc. So it's not quite done yet there. And if we look back at the satellite picture, some of that very deep convection located near the north coast of Venezuela, northwest uh, of there towards Colombia and the Aruba, Bonaire, Curacao region. Finally, as it approaches Cuba, uh, again, lots of rainfall in that area, 10 to 20 inches over eastern Jamaica and the Dominican Republic and eastern Cuba, and some of those areas could receive over two feet. So I'm going to highlight this right here as the number one hazard, in my opinion. Uh, not good at all to be seeing that. Storm surge, the ocean being pushed towards land by the very intense winds, Think of it as a giant leaf blower just blowing across that ocean and piling it up against land areas. That's going to be a big issue as well. Some of the areas along the Cuba coastline, 7 to 11 feet, and the south coast of Haiti, 5 to 8 feet, um, you know, 4 to 6 feet. You see it all in here. Cuba, Haiti, parts of Jamaica could be very problematic. Three to five feet of surge, four to six feet, seven to 11, etc. Not good in that regard as well. And then, of course, that all depends on the relative timing of the surge 
and the tidal cycle, and that can vary greatly over short distances. No way to accurately predict that. Down in this area, necessarily, they don't have the same slosh models and advanced surge prediction technologies that we do up here in the United States. Um, so it's just going to be a matter of luck. And then very large swells generated from this will radiate out from Matthew and affect a good deal of the Caribbean Sea as a whole, Central America. And they will eventually, after this crosses Cuba, start affecting the Bahamas, Florida, and the southeast coast. So we need to be watching for that. The very latest GFS this afternoon's run, the 18Z run, I want to put this into motion and show you what we have. There's Matthew coming up out of the Caribbean, a little bit of an easterly jog on this run, closer to the Haitian Peninsula right here. This will loop over a couple of times, and you'll see that. Kingston, Jamaica is right there. And so watch how this goes fairly far to the east of Jamaica in this run. Here it is down in the Caribbean doing that loop, and then it comes out. A little bit of a jog to the west, how far west it gets. That could make a big difference in where it ends up in this region over the next 36 hours or so. And then you can see the ridge trying to build in up here. All of this up here we'll worry about tomorrow and Monday, certainly Monday. Tomorrow I want to focus a lot more on what could be happening down here and then through this region as this will be obviously the first areas that this impacts. Subscribe for future videos. Follow on Hurricane, on Hurricane, at Hurricane Track on Twitter. And yes, we do have an app for iOS devices and Android that you can follow everything I do there in one nice convenient package. Two words, Hurricane Impact, and uh, that's available on the App Store as well as Google Play. That is it for me for to, that is it for me, that is it for, let's try again, take two, that is it from me for tonight. I am tired. It's been a long week and we have a long way to go. Uh, obviously, the Zero Z run of all the major models would be very interesting tonight. A lot of people are going to be watching that. Um, but first up, again, to emphasize what's happening in the Caribbean and eventually impacting Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba. Uh, we need to focus on that first and foremost. Have a great rest of your Saturday evening. Again, Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.